Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here. Welcome back to the channel. And welcome back to A Touch of Evil, The Banshee, Turn 5. Or is it? I think not. <laughs> and the reason for that is we've got some things to do in Turn 4, specifically the um, mystery phase. Uh, first of all though, I must apologise, you'll probably hear the fan in the background again. The reason for that is, is it's absolutely roasting. And I've, it was bad last night, it's bad tonight, but I want to, uh, I want to, um, I want to do this turn tonight, so I've had to switch the fan on, so apologies for that. And apologies to all your music lovers, I haven't bothered switching the uh, soundtrack on, because you won't be able to hear it anyway, because of the fan. But, let's go back to turn four and the mystery phase, and what I cocked up. First of all, um, let's start off at the beginning of the mystery phase when the minions move. Neither the barrel shade or the gameskeeper will move. That's because on the minion chart, it doesn't say that they move. So I shouldn't have moved the barrel shade last turn. I got it right for the gameskeeper saying he didn't move, but the barrel shade doesn't actually move on its minion chart either. So it stays where it is. Now they are going to move, but not quite the way as I envisaged originally. So, minions move, they didn't. Then, after that, we um, did all the, you know, KO'd heroes and the villain heals and all that sort of stuff, that was fine. And then, if you remember, we rolled on the advanced cooperative mystery phase chart. And we got six, March of Darkness. Every minute, minion on the board immediately moves two spaces along the shortest path to the town hall. Right, if you remember, I asked whether the gameskeeper moves, he does, but so does the barrel shade. In this instance, all minions move, yeah? So whether it's on the minion chart or not, so they will move. First of all, before I get into the barrel shade's movement, we shall do our friend the gameskeeper. Now, he's at the fields, and there are two ways you can go from the fields. So there's a little thing up here saying one to three you move towards the manor and four to six you move towards the windmill. So we'll just roll to see which way he's going to move. A four, he's moving towards the windmill. That's good because it means he is closer to our friend Eliza, who's at the magistrate's office. So hopefully she'll be able to get up there and deal with him. Right. The barrow shade. Now, the barrow shade has got to go this way. Uh, it is the shortest way to Shadowbrook Town Hall. Why is he going to Shadowbrook Town Hall? Quite a few reasons. Northbrook and South Dock, sorry, North Dock and South Dock are not adjacent. Now, I had them as adjacent last turn. They're not adjacent. The Forgotten Islands adjacent, so could go North Dock, Forgotten Island, South Dock and then move on to the town square, except you can't. Jason C. Hill actually said that any minion on the Echo Lake board will go to Shadowbrook Town Hall. I think the reason for this is, is the order in which the expansions were done. There was a time during the development of the game when there was only the Echo Lake expansion and the base game. When there was only the Echo Lake expansion, Obviously, every single minion had to go to the town hall. It was the only place they could go. And I think what happened is once the coast board arrived, they just sort of decided, why mess with that? People must be used now for their minions to from Echo Lake going to Shadowbrook. So we won't change it. Only minions that are on the coast board will go to the town square there. And they did it that way. Some people have house ruled it that if it's closer their Echo Lake minions will go to the town square. But as I mentioned right at the very beginning, I'm not doing any house rules until at least I've played the game a couple of times. So we're going to stick with the way that uh, Jason Hill says it should be, which is Mr. Barrow Shade is going the long way around to the town hall at Shadowbrook. So let's move in two spaces, one to the monastery and one onto the road. Again, this works in our favour because we wanted the Widow Jessica and Sarah to take him on anyway. And they are now a single space away. So cool. 
So that was how the movement should have gone with the minions. Next up, we drew this card, which was it struck again. If you remember, the Banshee missed. So we didn't actually have to kill a Town Elder. Not that we would have done anyway, because we had just a scratch, but we didn't have to use it. What I missed, well, I read it out, but I forgot to do it, was each hero gains one investigation. I did, I did notice it when I was watching the video back. So I did give them one investigation each. So that's sorted out. Right, that is it. So we've caught up with where we should be. The other thing I've done, uh, we won't bo bother going over to the player trays. I have given Sarah her additional two investigation for the start of the turn. So she's up to seven now. So she got an extra investigation for it struck again, plus two at the start of the turn, she's up to seven. Valeria's got three investigation because she got the extra one. And Eliza, who was on zero, is on one because she got it struck again investigation as well. So that is it. We are all up to date. Our first player is Valeria. So let's get on with the hero phase. And here we are with Valeria on the Tidewater board. So, first of all, let's chant the mantra, she has to move. So let's roll for movement. And she gets a six again. She's amazing. Right, so, a six. What's she going to do? Well, she go pretty much anywhere. So she could move three to the icy waters. And then another two to the shipwreck. Or she could go one, two, three, four, five, six back to Smuggler's Cove. Let's go back to Smuggler's Cove and use those six movement that way. Right, I'll zoom in on Smuggler's Cove and we will carry on with her hero phase. Here she is, Valeria the Eternal on Smuggler's Cove. There are no minions there, so no fighting has to go on. Next, we encounter the space. So let's get the Smuggler's Code deck. There's no special text on the board, so we can just get stuck in. Smuggler's Cove. A beautiful apparition. <laughs> Danger, investigation. In the cold, damp darkness, you are confronted by a stunning apparition of light and sorrow. Make a spirit 6 plus test and gain 3 investigation for each 6 plus rolled. If failed, draw a haunting to fight. It's beautiful. No, it isn't. It's a pain. Because what she got? Well, at least she's got 3 spirit now. So, let's see if she can do it. Come on, whoop, one went for Burton. Oh, damn it. <laughs> right, so what have we got here? If failed, draw a haunting to fight, damn. Right, haunting is a separate deck. I shall just go and get that. It's just over here, won't be a second. And here they are. This is the haunting deck. So, give it a quick shuffle, a cut, and then let's see what the bad news is. The hooded man. Fight dice six, wounds four. You must use combat to fight. The hooded man resolves its attacks before the hero each round. If defeated, gain plus Gain two plus one combat markers. Oh, right. Odd. So, right. Right, it goes first. So, da, 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 resolves its attack first. It's got six dice. One, two, four, five, six. Buddy, six fight dice. It got one hit. One hit, that is it. 
That is brilliant. Right, so it's got one hit. Valeria has got three combat. Has she got anything else that will help her? I don't think so. Now, because she's only got three combat, obviously she won't be able to kill it because it's got four wounds, but let's see what we get. We get Ziltjo, my guest. Right. So that is the end of the first fight round. But now, second fight round, we can actually escape, I think. I'm just going to check that. Hello, I'm back. Yes, I'm right. What we've got to do is we put the Hooded Man marker here because it's Smuggler's Cove is now haunted by the Hooded Man. Whoa. Because we're escaping, we can put this back in the deck. If anybody else comes here, they don't have to fight the Hooded Man. What they have to do is they have to roll a dice on a one or a two. They have to fight the Hooded Man. It doesn't stop movement because it's circular. It's not a square minion like these which you do have to fight. So, for example, you could move through Smuggler's Cove and just completely ignore the Hooded Man. But as I say, if you stop in Smuggler's Cove, you've got to roll a D6 on a 1 or a 2, you will have to fight him. But as it stands, because he hasn't been defeated, he stays here. But, like any fight, Valeria can escape, and she's just going to escape here onto an adjacent space but that is now the end of her turn she cannot do anything else during the hero phase so that's it so i think my advice here is never go to smuggler's cove because we haven't had a decent bloody card out of there yet so this haunting card goes back into the haunting deck by the way so you don't discard any so it just goes straight back in there right so, Valeria has, <laughs> has returned to type. After a brief round where she did really well, she's back to being crap. Right, oh, so after Valeria, now her, tur uh, now her hero phase has abruptly finished. Our next player will be Eliza the Witch Hunter. So, let's get over to the Magistrate's uh, office over in Shadowbrook. Here we have Eliza in Shadowbrook. So let's roll for movement. A five, that's what we wanted. So one, two, three, four to the windmill. And she has got to tackle the minion there who is the gameskeeper. So let me set that up and zoom in. And here we are all zoomed in. Right, got the groundskeeper here, sort of like balancing on the dice tower just so you can actually see him so there's only one fight round we use cunning now we've trained up eliza's cunning and we've also got the book of the occult so we've got six cunning we have the groundskeeper who has four fight dice but that goes up to five we have to add an extra one because of full moon now we roll and we find out hits on each other. If we get a hit, we get two investigations for each hit. If the groundskeeper gets a hit, we lose two investigations for each hit. If we don't have any investigations to lose, we lose an ally as well. Um, we haven't got any allies, and we've only got one investigation. So, tough. You can't lose more than one. Though, uh, obviously, if we get a combination of hits, then we will have to subtract one from the other. Then, once we've done this single fight round, then we will roll a die. If we manage to roll a six on that die, then the groundskeeper is gone, man. We, uh, he's gone from the game, and we can take those two wounds off the Banshee, which will be cool. If we don't manage to roll a six, then we'll pick a lair card and we send him to a new location. Right, so let's get rolling. So we've got five black dice and six white dice. Let's see what we get. Right, so the groundskeeper gets two hits and we get two hits. So essentially what's happened there is we've cancelled each other out. 
but we have took two wounds. So Eliza takes two wounds. She doesn't get a net increase, as I say, in her investigation because they got two hits in each. But what we do do now is we roll a die and let's see if we can get a six. Come on, we could do with a six and we could do with getting rid of this boy. Come on. Yes! Cat weasel! <laughs> yes! I'm a beast! Goodbye, Mr. Groundskeeper Willie. Ah, you're rubbish. Right. <laughs> that is absolutely fabulous. What a roll. What a roll. So, this plus two marker that we had on the Banshee goes back in the box. Woohoo! Let's just check that I got that right. I'll just show you where it is. So, after the fight with the groundskeeper, which is just one fight round, remember? It's on there. Roll a d6. On the roll of six, gain an additional five investigation. Cool, so we've got to pick that out and remove the groundskeeper from the game. Any, any future rolls of four on this chart are treated as a barrel shade above. Fantastic. So we need five investigation. Let's use one of the funky five investigation tokens. So that puts Eliza up to six investigation. She lost a couple of wounds, but she has got rid of the groundskeeper, Willie. Yes! That is absolutely fantastic. Right, okay, I'll just get rid of all these dice and everything. Won't be a second. Perhaps I shouldn't have got rid of the dice because we've got the rest of the turn. But <laughs> right, so we've got rid of that minion. Brilliant rolling by Eliza. She's just on fire. So she's at the windmill. So what she's going to do, having fought the minion, she can now encounter the space. So no special text. Let's get the windmill deck. And let's hope she has continues her good luck. Are you watching Valeria? This is how you do it. Right, so quick shuffle and vial of poison. This doesn't sound good. Investigation. Finding a small vial of deadly green liquid. You can't help but think of who might deserve such a fate. Good grief. What? Make an honour 5 plus test. If passed, gain 3 investigation. If failed, choose an ally, town elder or evil elder in play to poison. Remove an ally from the game or kill a town stroke evil elder. All right. Hmm, can't say. Let's please, <laughs> let's get a 5 plus. <laughs> Could definitely do with a 5 plus. Put all them dice back, including that one I just got a six with. I can't remember where to put it. Right, I'll just have to pick one. Right, come on. Five or a six, carry on. Come on, Eliza, keep it going. Five! Yes! It's one of those turns. <laughs> right, so that's cool. We don't have to kill anybody. And we get another three investigation. Fan dabby dozy. One two three so this is more than making up for valeria's crap turn that means that eliza is now on nine investigation brilliant stuff let's discard the vial of poison and put the windmill deck back brilliant absolutely brilliant what's next collect investigation from the space well there isn't any Heal a wound. Now, she can heal wounds now. And she is going to heal one. She's going to spend that three investigation that she just got. And she's going to heal one of those wounds that the groundskeeper gave her. So, she's only got a single wound now. Put that back. She's down to a single wound. Um, I don't like her with two wounds. One wound, considering she's got four wounds, is fine. Two that's half a health, so let's get rid of one of those. Now, she could investigate an elder, 
but she's not going to. We've investigated four elders now, and we know that none of them are evil. We're bound to pick an evil one next. It's a law of averages. We could take two of these on a showdown with us, so we'll just pick two of these four. Now, it may be, you know, we'll have to reveal secrets anyway, but I don't want to push it anymore. If a game effect means we need to reveal secrets, then fair enough. But let's stay with the four we've got. As it stands, I think Sophie and... Who is it? The Widow Jessica are, you know, pretty good elders to have on our side. And we'll go with them. So assuming that they don't go bad, then those are the two elders we'll take on a showdown. Right, so no more elder secrets. We're not buying a lair card, we're not starting a showdown, and we're not doing any trading or anything. That is it for Eliza's Mega Turn. What a babe. Right, not a bad bit of rolling either. Thought I'd just throw that in there. Right, next up is Sarah, the Bright Witch. And she's hunting down a barrel shade. Let's get across to Echo Lake. And here we are at Echo Lake. Now, what I'm thinking... What I am thinking is, I was thinking, you know, tackle the barrel shade. We'll have to, we don't want it going to, you know, the town square or the town hall. But as it stands, it's going to have to come through us. So what I could do is, I'm bound to roll at least a one. I could go and meet it. Or, if it's coming our way anyway, it's got to go this way. Because it'll move towards the town hall. If that's the case... I only need one to move to the inn. So let's go to the inn. We'll go back to the inn and that'll allow us to gain two investigation. So why not? We'll get quite a few investigation. Let's roll for movement. We could do with getting a one because we're getting an event card. No. <laughs> a five. So that was obviously Eliza's die that she's been rolling amazingly with. So both Sarah and the Widow Jessica will move to the inn. So before encountering the space, there is no minion to fight. So they, instead of healing a wound, they will gain to investigation. Which puts her up to nine, I believe. That's good. And we will draw an in card. And encounter the rest of the space. Attacked cobblers. And it looks like a banshee as well. <laughs> Roll once on the villain's minion chart and work out the result. Right, I suppose we could get attacked by the Banshee, so it's not automatically going to be a Barrel Shade. Although, we can no longer be attacked by the Games Keeper. Right, Banshee Minion Chart. Let's see what we get. Roll a black die. Remember, two to four is now a Barrel Shade. A five, it's a Banshee attack. No! We're getting attacked by the Banshee, everyone. Let's read it. Banshee attack. The villain attacks. The hero must immediately resolve a single fight round with the villain. Instead of causing wounds, each hit done to the villain gains one in investigation for the hero. This does not count as a showdown. If there are no heroes in the set... Well, there are, because it's attacking us in the inn... So, right, let's have a look at her. So she has got seven combat dice. It's only a single round. It isn't a showdown. So I'm going to roll seven black dice. Let's dig those out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Put those in. Now... What do we have to attack the Banshee with? Is it... I don't think it's spirit. I think it is normal combat. 
yeah it's just the barrel shades we attack with spirit um we've got spirit four and in fact we can use the widow jessica's which is five so spectre doesn't um kick in oh wailing death for every fight dice roll of a six that the Banshee gets, the hero must pay two investigation or take an additional hit. Good job we've got some investigation then. Right, so we've got to count how many sixes we get. She has three combats. One, two, three, which isn't great. The Widow Jessica, I think she can help us out. At the start of every fight round, heal any wounds you have on the D6 roll of a three pull. Well, that's not... She hasn't got any wounds, and it's only going to be one fight round, so the Widow Jessica isn't going to help us. Right. I'm going to roll these dice separately, but they're being rolled at the same time, if you know what I mean. It's just that I won't be able to get them all in the dice tower at all. Three. Whoop, that one fell out. Oh, two hits, that's all. Two hits. Brilliant. So just two fives, none of them were a six, so that's just two wounds. And Sarah. Sarah didn't get a single bloody hit, crap. But it's only two wounds. She's got four, because if you remember, she has got a, an extra wound from the Hunter. But that's still a bit of a blow. To be honest, no longer attacked because it only happens for one round only. So they've managed to survive an attack by the Banshee. And because she didn't get any hits on the Banshee, she doesn't get any investigation. It wasn't a showdown, so we can just carry on with the rest of the hero phase. And, well, there's no investigation to pick up can heal a wound and we are going to heal a wound so one of those wounds is going to go away because we're going to spend three investigation which puts it back down to is it six yep so there we go so she's only got one wound now we're not going to investigate an elder we're not going to buy a lair card we're not going to start showdown and we are not going to exchange any gear so that is it for Sarah. Not a very good turn, unfortunately. Um, she did get two investigation, but she had to spend an extra one and that two to get rid of one of these wounds, and she's still got a wound. So, damn it! Extremely... Oh! Oh, hang on. Oath of the Hunter gained plus one fight dice against a vampire ghost. Sword. She's got an extra die. So she's just going to roll one more die just to see if she can get an investigation back. Let's and knock some investigation off the bog. Let's put them back. Right. Come on, a five or a six, you can get an investigation back. Damn. <laughs> so she should have rolled four dice there because she was up against a ghost. But she didn't get a single like success anyway, so it doesn't matter. Right, that is the end of the hero phase. And it was a bit of a mixed bag. It was bad for Valeria. It was pretty bad for um, Sarah. I think she should have just gone and fought that bloody barrel shade. And um, But it was absolutely amazing as far as Eliza was concerned. So, there you go. Right, so, it's the laugh and chuckle phase. Let's get on with the mystery phase. And here we are for the laugh and chuckle phase. So where is everybody? So we've got Valeria over here next to the haunting, which is there. We have Eliza, who's here in the windmill where she's tearing it up, baby. And we have the very lucky Sarah, who's just escaped a brush with the Banshee. She's here with the Widow Jessica at the inn. We've got a barrel shade sort of on the road in between the monastery and the inn. And... We have Dr. Manning in the fields. So that's pretty much it for where everybody is on the board. So let's get on with the mystery phase. So first of all, minions move, except they don't. Barrel shades do not move according to their minion chart for the Banshee. So that's fine. 
Um, after that, we start the actual mystery phase itself. Knocked out heroes can get up. Nobody's been knocked out, thankfully. And after that, the villain can heal. Well, it's got no wounds, so it's not going to heal. Uh, the two uh, wounds that it lost were because we got rid of the uh, groundskeeper Willy, so she won't get those back because they're sort of bonus wounds, so um, she can't heal those. That's good. Uh, we roll on the advanced cooperative mystery phase chart. Always a joy. So let's do that and see what we get. A couple of black dice. And we get a three. I think that's a new one. I don't think we've had that one before. Let's check out what it is. Cursed Village. Immediately draw and resolve one mystery card for each hero. Three mystery cards, starting with the first player. This replaces the normal mystery card for the turn. Right. So we're drawing three, not four. Well, thank God for that. But we've still got to draw three. That's bad. Three cards. First player is obviously Valeria. So let's get the mystery deck. Right, quick shuffle. Cut, and we'll do one, two, three. Wow, really looking forward to this. Right, let's drop, let's have a look at the first one. Domination, mystery. The player who drew this card, obviously we're doing it by player order, so this is Valeria. Must immediately choose any ally in play, including unsold ally town items, to join the villain. This ally loses all game text and bonuses and he's now treated as an evil elder. So it's not an elder. So have we got any allies in play? I don't think we have. Manning's in play and the Widow Jessica is in play. The Founder's Journal. Well, that isn't an ally. I'm just checking the cards for for the ally keyword. No, we've got items and we've got an oath. We don't have any allies and it specifically says allies. So we have got away with that one. Oh, including unsold ally town items. Right, it's Valeria, so she's in Tidewater. So I'm reading that it'll have to be a Tidewater coastal. A coastal town item. So we'll get an ally from in here. And it'll just be the first one we pick. Quick shuffle, and then I'll just turn them over. The first ally we get to, that's the one. Exotic herbs, no, that's not an ally. Exotic herbs again. The boatman, right. It now costs you one less move to cross any water path. Well, that doesn't count anymore. Yeah, because he's joined. Got rid of the ground. <laughs> he got rid of the groundskeeper, but she's got a boatman. The banshee's got a boatman. He's joined her. Yeah, so he gives a plus one wound. So, so where we've got plus one wound here, we'll just flip that over, I think. Right, she's now plus two. Because of that, damn. And he's already plus one combat. Plus one combat as well. So we'll put him over here. Right, so she's got plus one combat now. So where she was seven combat, she is now eight combat. So, damn. Damn to damn damn. So that's a bad card. That was a bad one. But we've got two more to go. So, mystery. Growing strength. This card plays on the villain. The villain gets plus one. Right. I'll actually discard that and just put a plus one marker on it to save uh, 
thingy up the board. So the two wounds we get off her by getting rid of the groundskeeper are now back on her. And our last mystery card, the Order's Influence, Mystery Conspiracy. Play this card on Sophie. No, the midwife, while she is alive. Town elders with more than one secret may not join a hunting party. If she is dead or join the villain, discard and move the shadow trek one step closer to darkness. We are a private people and would prefer to keep it that way. Mm -hmm. Right. Play this card on Sophie the midwife while she is alive. Town elders with more than one secret may not join the hunting party. Well that's fine. Oh what's it's got more than one secret? The widow Jessica can't join the hunting party now. I think she can still go around with Sarah because they're not as part of a hunting party. They're just like she's just like a, an ally following her around but when we come to the showdown the widow Jessica has got two secrets and cannot join us so it looks like it'll be Sophie and Dr Manning because Sophie's still got one secret and Dr Manning's still got one secret Lady Hambrook at a push but if you remember she's a coward and she'll run off she, there is a chance of her running off so bugger right so that remains in play Sophie, what are you doing to us? Right, so that's three mystery cards. Probably could be worse. Um, but it's a bit of a blow that the Widow Jessica can't come and help us. She's good for avoiding wounds and stuff. Fortunately, we have got, we've now got the chance of Dr Manning. We may, I think, still get a chance with Widow Jessica. But we'd have to draw some sort of card or event where we can discard a secret. I'm not even sure if there is one. But um, if there is, then we'll use it to discard a secret off the Widow Jessica. Now, a lot of things have happened this turn. It's took a while. Uh, I know I promised somebody that I'd try and be quicker, but sorry, a lot happened and I do witter on. Um, there's, a good, <laughs> there's a good chance I've made a boo-boo somewhere. Um, it's just one of these horrible turns that you sometimes get with flying frog games where one thing like generates another thing and before you know it you've gone through about 16 iterations of something and you can't remember whether you're coming or going I think I've got it right you'll probably get a load of text whizzing by for things that are forgotten but I think I've played that right let me know if I haven't especially the Sophie thing um, reading it it just sounds like the widow Jessica, as it stands, cannot join our hunting party because she's got two secrets. I don't think as it is now, she's actually in our hunting party. As I say, I think she's just sort of acting as an ally. But Daniel, if you're watching, let me know. I'm sure you know. Um, if she has to go back into the box, then she has to go back into the box. That's just the way it is. Right. So, a sort of half good turn, half crap turn. It went really well at one point, and now it's just gone back to normal. The wounds that we uh, managed to get off the Banshee through defeating the actual groundskeeper, well, useless. Um, they've come back on because of the boatman and because of one of the mystery cards. So she's back where she was, and she's even got an extra combat because of the boatman. So that's just brilliant. And we have lost the possible services of Widow Jessica during the showdown because she's got two secrets, which is a bit of a bummer. Right, so that is it for yet another overlong episode of A Touch of Evil, The Banshee. So I hope you enjoyed turn five. I'm not sure I did. I'm still cogitating whether it was a good turn or not. But it's finished now. So thank you very much for watching. Thanks for all the subscriptions, thanks for all the views, thanks for all the comments, and thanks for all the help and the support. It is very much appreciated. As ever, those questions or any cock-ups you notice during the playthrough, please let me know and I will try and fix them for next turn. And anything, oh yes, anybody who's been to Board Game Links to upvote the site, once again, thank you very much. I think we're on 79 now, that's not bad, is it? Um, I think we're in uh, 37th place or something so that's that's amazing thanks very much and I hope that you will join me next time 
for what will be turn six of A Touch of Evil, The Banshee. Until then, though, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo.